Hi and welcome back. This module is on space management and storage efficiency. What will we do in this module? First we will have a look at managing the volume and aggregate space. This means that we will manage the space that's taken by snapshot versus the available data space in the volume. We will see that there are multiple options for that. Think of automatic snapshot deletion and volume autosizing, thin provisioning and full provisioning. We will discuss flex clones and what the use cases for flex clones are. Then we will have a closer look at what ways of compression we have and how we can configure that. We will look at inline adaptive compression versus secondary compression. We will also discuss inline deduplication and post process deduplication. And finally, we will look at compaction and the space you could gain when enabling that feature. This module, again, starts with some theory before we have a demo on each of these topics. So let's first start with volume space. Without enabling the efficiency techniques, the amount of data that a client writes is actually what it writes, so logically and physically. So the space that is in use is physically the same as what the client logically sees. So if a client writes 10 gigabytes of data, then that is what it is. The viewpoint doesn't matter. 10 gig is 10 gig. Now when a snapshot is created, this may start to differ. A client may remove a file and thinks that he has freed up, say, 1 gigabyte. But when he checks, he sees that he still has 10 gig in use in the file system. Obviously, the blocks that he thinks that he freed are not actually freed because they are locked in a snapshot. This becomes problematic when the client, after deleting a file, wants to write new data. There will come a time when the snapshot of blocks will block the client from writing new data, because there are no free blocks available anymore, because of the snapshot. Now what can we do? There are a couple of options. The first and least popular option is to tell the client that the file system is full. Because he has just removed some files to create new files, he will be very annoyed or at least confused. The second option would be to remove snapshots. Well, since we agreed not to create any unnecessary snapshots, to us, storage admins, this is not really an option. We need these snapshots, otherwise we wouldn't have created them in the first place. We have one more option left, and that is to grow the volume. This can be done automatically. You can automatically grow volume when space is getting thin. And once clients start deleting files, the volume can also automatically be shrunk again. We'll have a look at that in a demo in a second. I'm going to talk about snapshot auto-deletion first. Let's first set an example volume size and an example snap reserve. The volume is 10 gig and the snap reserve is 10%, so 100 megabytes. So the data space is 900 megabytes and the snapshot space is 100 megabytes. To start with, there is a trigger option. So when do we start deleting snapshots? This trigger can have one of three values. This is either volume, snap reserve or space reserve. This last one, by the way, is deprecated. By volume, we mean the entire volume. So by snap reserve, we mean the reserved snap space. And by space reserve, we mean the data space of the volume. Now, what is this threshold that will trigger the snapshot auto deletion? Let's take an example. We say the trigger is volume. So if the total available space in the volume drops below a certain level, then auto deletion will start. This threshold depends on the size of the volume. If the volume is less than 20 gigabytes, then the threshold is 85%. So if the available space drops below 15%, then the snapshot deletion gets started. For a volume that's bigger than 20 gigabytes and less than 100 gigabytes, it's 90%. For a volume between 100 and 500 gig, it's 92. And 500 gig and 1 terabyte, so between in between 500 gig and 1 terabyte, it is 95%. And for volumes that are larger than one terabyte, it is 98%. So the bigger the volume, the higher the threshold. Now, of course, the deletion of snapshots should also stop automatically if enough space is freed. 
This is taken care of by the target free space parameter. This means that if the free space of the volume reaches the target free space value, then snapshot auto-deletion will stop. It is best practice to set this value very low, so for example 2% or 3%, because then the snapshot deletion will stop, because you don't want to delete snapshots if it's not really necessary, of course. Now let's have a look at automatically growing and shrinking a volume in a demo. So first we have two windows and we are going to uh, define the example volume which is 100 megabytes. Uh, we will list the auto size mode and max auto size values. Then we'll set the auto size mode to grow shrink, set the max auto size to 140 megabytes and then we will fill up the volume with data. Uh, the top terminal is my Linux uh, machine and the bottom terminal is our cluster. So first we run df and we look for the example volume. So we've mounted the slash example directory in slash mnt to the example volume in our cluster. Now we run the vol show fields max auto size and it tells us that it is 100 megabytes. So this volume will never grow beyond 100 meg. Then we list the field snapshot space reserve so the percentage snapshot space and it tells me that it's 0%. So all of the volume space is data space. We have no snap reserve. Then we run vol show and look at the auto size mode of the example volume and it's set to off. So we are not automatically growing the volume. Now let's change that. So we modify the volume's max auto size to 140 megabytes. So it can grow to a maximum of 140 meg. Um, then we will enable the auto size mode to grow shrink. So it will grow and shrink whenever possible. So we check the values and we see that it's grow shrink and the size, the max auto size is 140 megabytes. Now let's create some files. I have created a little binary that will generate one file of 10 megabytes and I'm going to run seven of them. So I'm going to create seven files of 10 megabytes and store them in the volume of course. So that will take about 70 megabytes which is not more than 85 percent. So the volume should not really grow yet. It's under the 85 percent uh, threshold. Okay so I do it again and now I add a couple of more files. So I add another 10 megabytes first and I see that the volume has grown to 105 megabytes because it has crossed the threshold level of 85%. Then I will create another file and it will, and let's just create a couple more. Uh, it's still 105 so I'm going to create a couple more. I'm going to create file 3 and I'm going to create file 4. So I add another 10 megabytes or 20 megabytes and now it's grown to the max size basically. So it's 139 megabytes in size and I've got about 120 megabytes in use which is, um, well, obviously the volume has grown. Now I'm going to remove all of the files to free up the disk space again in the volume and we see that the volume has shrunk to 100 megabytes which is beautiful. And we're done. Now let's check the aggregate space. It is good to realize that when you create a volume, you enter the volume size. If you don't, it will be 20 megabytes. So usually you will enter a volume size when you create the volume. This size, by default, will be taken from the available aggregate space. So obviously, if you create a 100 gigabyte volume in a 1 terabyte aggregate, after creation, the space in the aggregate will be 100 gigabytes less than before. If you would create all of your volumes like that, then in a 1 terabyte aggregate, you cannot create more than 1 terabyte of volumes in that aggregate. Now, if your volumes are not fully capacitated, so some volumes only use a few megabytes of space, then still you would lose 100 gigabytes for every 100 gigabyte volume you create. So that would give you 10 volumes in total, even though you would not use a lot of data blocks in these volumes. 
So in this example you see 10 volumes of 100 gigabytes, most of which only use a little bit of space. Now if one or more volumes do fill up and want to grow, then there will be no space available in the aggregate, even though some volumes have very little or no data. If the volumes would have been thin provisioned, then these volumes that need to grow would have had space to grow. So if you create volumes that are thin provisioned, but if you do not overcommit, overcommit means, by the way, that you create thin provision volumes that would not be able to take full space because you hand out more virtual space than the aggregate offers. So you create 30 volumes of 100 gigabytes, but you thin provision them, if they would start taking all their space that they were allotted, well, obviously, then you would need a 3 terabyte aggregate instead of a 1 terabyte aggregate. Now, to create a thin provision volume, you would use the uh, parameter space guarantee none. By default, the space guarantee uh, parameter is set to volume, which means thick provisioning or full provisioning. So, again, space guarantee none means you create a thin provision volume. So overcommitting is very risky and calls for very good monitoring. A thin provisioning gives you a lot more flexibility, um, especially when you use the grow shrink mode, and you should always monitor your disk space anyway. The next section will be on storage efficiency, and we will finish that section with a demo, and then we will be done with this module.